the smallest. Okay, now we're recording in progress. Um, I think we have to start by um okay. Um by I think Ben sent out the minutes from the last minute meeting. Did everybody get those? Yes. Okay. So we're going to vote to approve the minutes first, if everyone is good with that. I move to approve the uh, pool building committee meeting minutes from January 25th, 2024. Thank you, Thank you Gordon. Is there any? Um... Second. Thank you, Steve. All right, so I'm going to just go through who I have listed that's actually here that can vote, and then we'll go from there. So, Cora, I'll say yes. Uh, Bruce? That's a yes for me. Okay. Um, Donna? Yes, for me. And Gordon? Yes. And uh, Steve? Yes. And Greg? Yes. Am I missing anybody else that is a voting member? I can uh, only me. see a certain amount of people on here. Who did I miss? Uh, Matt. Oh, Matthew. Sorry. Okay. No, yeah, I no see you're you. good. You're good. You're good. I'm a yes, too. <laughs> okay. Great. So, all right. Cool. So, uh, that passes. Any other questions at this point about that? Okay. Um, And I cannot find the agenda that was sent out. So I'm gonna have to look for that for a second in my email. Did that come also, from you, Gordon? I can pull it up here, Cora. If maybe I should share. It's okay oh, if I share great. screen. Sure, that's fine. Thank you. See if that... Can folks see that okay? Yeah, yep. super. Great. great. Thank you. Um so public participation. Uh do we have anybody here that <clears throat> would like to participate? Uh it doesn't appear to be uh, and Jamie? Oh no, that's not there. Uh, anybody here from the public that would like to participate? I don't think so, Cora. Jamie's from uh, Fontaine. Okay. Just, uh... All right. Okay. So we will move on to the Skanska update, and I will turn it over to whoever is going to speak first. Thanks, Cora. All right, cool. There we go. Thanks, Ben. I was like, I don't know who was, who was going first. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Uh, Christian, if you could so kindly just click on to the next uh, slide, sure. please. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a, a little bit of time, several months since we've uh, last met. Um, but just because we haven't had much exposure with you all doesn't mean that our team hasn't been uh, busy. Um, so the design and construction planning has been ongoing um, since we've last met, um, and I, we've also uh, we just completed um, the budget verification process, uh, the cost estimate reconciliation uh, based off of the design development documents. Um, so the design team got those to a point where they were shared with the um, the estimating team for both the design team as well as uh, Fontaine. Uh, so they dug through those documents and produced. Uh, independent estimates, which we just a couple weeks ago um, went through and reviewed line by line um, and <clears throat> reconciled the two estimates. Um, so what you're seeing up on the screen now is um, where the costs, uh, what the approved budget uh, what is. Um, so at Schematic Design, if you recall, the um, construction costs, total construction costs was uh, estimated to be $13,997,536. Um, with some various uh, soft costs and contingency added to that, the overall uh, total project budget that was approved um, by town vote was uh, $16,795,536. Um, so Christian, if you could just go to the next slide to show where we ended up after our cost estimate reconciliation process. So um, if you take a look at the, the number uh, outlined in red there, um, that's the overall uh, cost of the construction. Um, so that was where our estimates came in at. So that is slightly below what the control budget was, the approved budget. Um, so that's uh, great news um, for, for this uh, milestone. Um, again, looking to bid out, you know, this project, uh, have everything bid out by the end of the year. 
Um, so we're kind of closing in on those dates. So the, the further along we get in the process and, and the more we uh, repeat this exercise, kind of the, the more honed in we get. So we're, we're comfortable and confident that that number is inclusive of everything. Um, the estimate is inclusive of everything for the project. Um, and that the you know appropriate contingencies um, and, and escalation are, are carried uh, for for bid day. So um, we'll continue to do this uh, sort of exercise at, at further uh, construction document milestones for sixty percent for ninety percent. We'll report back to your committee um, based on where the uh, the costs are, are are coming up. So, but for right now, uh, very good news on the budget front. And um, with that I'll turn it over to Christian, unless there's any questions on uh, on the budget. No, everybody all good. Okay, great. I mean, yeah, it's great. It's great news. Um, the reconciliation process was helpful. We had a number both from Fontaine and from PMNC, and uh, yeah, just thrilled that it came in right at right at where we wanted it to come at at the end of schematic design. Um, on the architecture front, uh, not too much has changed, but we did want to um, just kind of update you all on on a few uh, minor things. Actually, so let me, yeah, so on the on the plan, this is uh, not representative of the colors <laughs> that will be uh, will be used on the project, but just a, a shaded um, version of our um, our Revit model, our three d model. Um, we've been looking at floor finishes a little bit um, and and interior finishes within our team. Um, some changes just to mention we had uh, a portion of walk-off um, carpet um, through these vestibule doors here. Um, looking into it a little bit more and doing some research, it seemed like with this wet environment, that was probably not the best approach. So now we have removable walk-off mats. We have a porcelain ceramic tile um, that's here in the lobby, and that's carried through this corridor uh, to the north, as well as the uh, pool office room here. Um, we have a separate separate porcelain uh, ceramic tile in the bathrooms. Um, and then over in this gray area, this is all uh, an epoxy uh, floor coating um, for those uh, locker rooms um, and that corridor into the pool area. Um, around the pool itself, uh, we have, again, uh, two different types of uh, porcelain ceramic tile. Um, and... Uh, and that pretty much covers the floor finishes. Um, any questions on that? No. Okay, hey, Christian, yeah. I'm assuming there's some kind of anti-slip or aggregate that's going to be embedded in the tile finish itself, um, given the, the wet area. Yeah, we're looking at that for the porcelain ceramic tile, trying to get as much texture as we can, Bruce. And then certainly there's an aggregate in the um, in the epoxy floor over in the locker rooms so that that helps with that area. Okay, thank you. Yep. And um, going into it, yeah, we can go into a bit more detail. And we have a few kind of representative thumbnails down here um, for the. Wall finishes, we're looking at um, a, a ground face block, which is a, a concrete masonry unit, a CMU, um, but with a, with a nice ground face on it, you can see some of the aggregate um, and it's a, it's a really nice finish. Um, then we have a, a glazed um, accent stripe above that that you can see here and then painted CMU above um, and the painted CMU is a bit less expensive. Um, you know, easy to repaint over time, um, but we find that that uh, ground face block really has a nice finish down kind of at the at the level where people can can touch and feel. Um, we have uh, soft gray tiles around the pool and then uh, a warm red tile um, right at the right at the edge of the pool. Um, we have some accent uh, columns here as well. And some of these are structural on this side um, that are, you know, helping the structure above. On this side, we have them bumped out and they're actually containing some of our uh, ducts, uh, our return ducts in particular. Um, SMMA has been working on um, daylight studies um, and looking at different products there. 
Um, it looks like for the majority of the windows, we'll be able to use um, an insulated glass product that has kind of a, uh, a material that goes between the panes of glass that not only helps with the insulation of that glass, but also diffuses the light. It really helps cut down on the glare. Um, so we're looking at that compared to a lot of exterior fin elements and doing the best we can to control the daylight. But I think that that, um, that insulated glass product is really going to um, work, work well in, the, in this environment. Any other questions on finishes yeah, there? I do, yeah, Christian. Bruce. Sorry to ask all these questions. But no, this I is great. On the um on the daylight, will the um, swimming instructor and or PE instructors be able to control that daylight, or is it going to be just a fixed amount of daylight coming through those those windows? That's a great question, Bruce. We we've been looking into that a little bit. We need to do some more diligence on. Um, we would like to have um, automatic shades on the inside. Um, the question is how they fare in that in that pool environment, right? Oh, just about that. Yeah. I think I just lost it. Um, so yeah, we're still we're still looking into that uh, that question. Okay, thank you. Yep. A um, little bit on the flooring. So here's some examples of that. So uh, lobby walls again is that ground face block that you see here, kind of in the background. Um, lobby floors is a porcelain ceramic tile, um, toilet room floors, uh, a lighter, uh, tile on the, um, wall on the floors. And, um, we're looking at a, a penny tile on the wet walls. So we have a lot of concrete, uh, masonry units in this, uh, area of the building, which is great for longevity and maintenance. Um, so in the bathrooms, the majority of the walls will be that painted CMU or that ground face block. But then on the wet walls where we have the sinks or toilets, um, we will apply a, 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 a tile over that. Um, that should really um, kind of, you know, enliven the space. Um, and then over there on the bottom right is the locker room floors is that uh, epoxy floors with, a, with an anti-slip. Um, in terms of some of the electrical coordination going on in the pool, um, we have been looking at overhead speaker locations, um, which are right um, on the over right above the the deck portion of the of the building. Um, and then we have a combination of lighting with some wall washes um, on that western wall, um, as well as overhead uh, asymmetric fixtures again over the deck, um, but that will uh, cast light up. And reflect it down over over the pool itself. Those I have are... a question about the speakers. Are the speak those speakers just from the pool? Is it connected to anything that will be like out in the lobby or any place else in the school? I don't think that was planned for Cora. I mean, in terms of controlling it, they were on remotes, and we, the um, the head end of that was going to be in the pool office. Okay. Um, but do you mean in terms of? Like, can it tie it like broadcasting the same the, thing if throughout? If, like if we're having a swim meet and people are sitting out in the hallway, right? And they're not in the pool area, but we're making yep. announcements. It yep. would only go into the pool area and not anywhere past that. I know like when we swim at Agawam, they swim at their junior high school. Yeah. And the system that they were using, a lot of the families and the teams were in the kind of like adjacent, I think it's like a cafeteria type area. And they yep. could hear in there what was happening. So they knew like when to send kids in for swimming and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you think it should tie into the PA system for the school as a whole? Um, I mean, I don't think it has to go into the whole school. I, the right. only area I think we would probably use, we we asked about, the, I think there's going to be like a small gym. The gym and the all PE area. Yeah, and, the gym yeah. and the PE area. So, because um, I know like, also, like if there's going to be PE classes in there and if they have to evacuate or do anything, it would have to be tied in, I would guess. I'm not sure. I, I just don't know how that would work. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. We'll look into that for sure. Great Thank point. You. Yeah. I don't want to speak for the school department, Christian, but I'm assuming, Gordon, you would want the PA system 
interconnected in some way into that area for lockdown right. situation, security and things like that as well. Yes, no, it makes sense, Bruce. Yep, absolutely. Because you're going to have PE classes in there. And I think, and, and high school team swimming, like they'll be in there too. So there'll be times when it's going to be overlapped with the high school that would need to know what's, what's happening. So. Great. These are all the great topics. You know, we keep thinking of this as a separate building, but not really. And <laughs> this is right, right in that same line of things. My, uh, this might be not totally related to this. I'm not totally sure. Like there are banners hanging in the pool area. And I know a lot of times like in gymnasiums, they have like specific like di like divots in the wall to hang stuff from. I don't know if that's in the plan for any of the walls in the pool area, but I know there are past, hopefully future banners that will be hanging um, from the high school. So I don't know if that was planned into any of the wall specs or anything, but it, I wouldn't want them to be not hung yeah. or displayed great i don't know i don't know how that works in the in the gym and how they're all hung and everything but i know there are ones hanging currently yeah okay great yeah just to add on that um in addition to the banners some type of record board like we currently have for current school records is very beneficial also yeah and you I think guys think that's, that's something that's that I think it's time to retire the old one that's there. Is it? That's yeah. what I was wondering. <laughs> Not moving the existing over, but for a new a new record update, board. Updated version would be nice. Okay, great. Hey, Cora, typically how many different events do you have for records, record keeping as far as that? So Christian can obviously size something properly. Yeah. So for the high school, I'm trying to think because they do different events than we do in rec, but they do uh, the 200 medley, the 200 free relay, the 400 free relay, 500 free. Just, I just got to write them all down. <laughs> Um, and then, oh, there's diving. Are there, do, Kevin, I think they still have the records for both diving or just one on there. Do you know? I'm not sure. I think I took a picture of the West Springfield record board. I'm trying to find that on my phone. Um, and the one at Minnetog is really good too. And they use a local company. So when they get, if they get updated or the records get broken, they just get like new little like stickers that they repost over the old records. Um, but I can definitely get those numbers and send them to like Christian or whoever separately. And I, they only do three meter diving, but I don't know if they have a 10 meter diving record for the school or not. I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, so about. there's at least 11, probably 12, depending on the diving. Okay. But I can, I could send exactly what we have, and then they usually write the events in the middle, and then they put the boys on one side, and then the girls on the other side, um, and with the year and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. great. Great. Well, I think that's about all we had for the architecture side. The only thing I wanted to mention, and I did not include a slide on this in time but that we're basic we're taking the pool was a little bit behind the school that was helpful in the dd pricing uh process and that our cost estimators could focus on the school project first and then focus on this one next now that we're getting to the point of releasing early packages which maybe fontaine will talk about we're going to pass it over to them but um we're going to put both of them on the same timeline the same track um, and that's because we're going out for uh, an early package that will include site, uh, site work, uh, concrete, uh, steel, um, an elevator for the for the school. Um, that's going out around kind of late July ish uh, of this year, um, and that's so that those contractors can get started um, a little bit earlier than everybody else. Um, so that will include, you know, all of the foundation work for the school as well as the pool. And and the foundation for the pool is a bit more complicated because it's going a little bit, a little bit deeper. Um, but so all that's going to get wrapped up 
um, on the same timeline. Then we have another package going out probably around late October of 2024. That's going to be for mechanical and electrical plumbing and fire protection. Um, and then we're wrapping up the rest of the construction documents in early December of 2024. Um, and that's when we'll bring on the kind of the, the remaining contractors um, and uh, and get them involved in both processes as well. The really interesting part will be that uh, what we're calling early release package number three for the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection um, and how that works between the two different projects. Um, those are called filed sub-bids within the state of Massachusetts. So, um, yeah, we'll have to look into that going down the road. But other than that, I think setting both of the projects on the same timeline is really going to help streamline those things and, and get uh, cost competitive uh, proposals from folks. And if there's no other questions on that, I think I'm ready to turn it over to Fontaine. I have one uh question that may be off topic. I met with the high school builders today and I had asked about the storage of the golf cart and they didn't have anything in their plans for the high school. And they said there might be something in the pool building for the storage of the golf cart. I just wanted to check on that to know, to see if there was any cross communication about where we're storing the golf cart. The, the golf cart is currently being um, shown in the athletic storage area in the um, kind of southeast corner of the gym wing, B wing, there's a overhead door that would allow it to come in inside the building there. Perfect. Because they said they got rid of that external door. So that that confused me too. But it sounds like it's going to be a garage door. Correct. There's an overhead door. Perfect. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Can you see my screen, Kevin? Yes. Great. So um, this is a bad plan because it's a... <laughs> This is our Revit model for the pool, so it's not that helpful, but if you can kind of orient yourself, this is the locker room here, um, and then this is that storage area, and that's the overhead door that Joe was referring to. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Great. Turn it over to Jamie or Danielle or Jason. Who else do I see on here? Thanks, Christian. Yeah, yeah. I think we have, we got a gaggle, so... Um... A couple of the other Jamies that are on the call, Mark's on site today, so he stole my identity. And then Danielle's uh, sitting next to me. And then we also have Jason Boudreaux on the call, who's a big part of our pre-con team here. Um, that's just an overview for, for people who weren't kind of it, part of the interview process. Uh, this is essentially the rundown of our team with the, the kind of core people are myself, Danielle, Mark, and Jason. who will basically be dealing with us for the next two and a half, three years. Um, so we want to just take a minute to, to run through uh, the big picture schedule for the project and sort of some of the phasing for it. So Christian, are you controlling the slides? I am, yeah. Perfect. All right. So uh, this summer, which is coming fast, um, the this is called our enabling package with the, the key thing here is we want to be completely separated from the existing school's operations. Once the kids come back next year, uh, so we have a lot of work to do, basically just separating the site for the new building and the pool uh, from the existing building. So you can see kind of where that number two and number four is. We're going to be putting in an access road around uh, the sort of backside of the site. Uh, we chose this path to try to keep that soccer field slash lacrosse field online um, and, and not, you know, cut right through the middle of it and then that is basically where all of our traffic will go through. We won't be using Norton Street and we won't be using uh, the school's access off of Maple. It'll be a dedicated kind of access where that number two is. And then the number 10, um, it's sort of diagrammatical. It, it's changed a little bit with some iterations. There's going to be a bunch of trees up front that are staying, so it's not all getting paved. But the, the parking area up front uh, is going to get put in place this summer as well. Uh, we're working with the school to make sure that we we have enough kind of flex parking there as the parking off of Norton is going to be coming offline once we get going. And then the uh, work, there's number three, there's a gate there. 
that work has actually been broken into sort of sub phases now because we are trying to accommodate the summer concert series and then also the fireworks. So that again, this this sort of shows what it'll look like first day of school, but the the fence line will change a couple times over the course of the summer, uh, just with the activities that are kind of already happening uh, on the site on a normal summer. And then if we go to the next slide. So this is basically what we're looking at uh, when school starts. We'll retreat inside of our fence line there, get going on foundations. Um, like Christian said, we have uh, the foundation starting sort of right off the bat, and then steel deliveries will start in the early winter time, kind of be swinging steel through December, January. Uh, and then if you go to the next slide, the exterior envelope starts coming online. Um, this is kind of for for people watching. And so I was like, oh, wow, the building is going up really fast. But, you know, once we get the envelope on, then we have to do all the work on the inside. So it, it, it kind of pops up really fast. And then it seems like it takes forever, but there's a lot of work to do in there. So but big picture, uh, that envelope work, uh, we're, draw we're driving to get the inside of the building dry. So it's the walls, windows, roof, and then we can start all the mechanical and electrical stuff inside the building uh, and then drywall, paint, all that good stuff. So next slide. Then the summer of 25, once school's out, we'll kind of jump outside the fence line again and try to get the new parking area, uh, that new kind of entrance off Maple, the tennis courts and the work around the existing stadium, the press box and the uh, new concession building. All of that is going to be summer of 25 with most likely the, the work inside the concession building kind of lagging into the school year, but we'll have all the actual site work in place uh, so we can retreat back into the fence uh, come the fall. So the next slide. So the only real change um, through the fall, we'll, we'll go back inside the fence line and then we basically get to the summer of 26. Uh, where we're putting the bus loop right in front of the the school in kind of the the ringed road uh, over between the school and the stadium, trying to get that all online. And then the minute that the occupied school is empty, we're going to start abatement and demo because that is right in our way. So again, the all our summers, including this one, are pretty busy out there. Um, while that focus with the, the demo is going on. We'll start basically stripping the rest of the site to prepare for all the other fields. And if you go to the next slide. So fall 26, this is sort of the, the first day of school slide, as we call it. So the, the permanent parking and sort of the permanent access for the new school will all be in place. So people can start sort of learning traffic flow and how everything works. Uh, while we're still knocking down the remainder of the old building and still working on the fields. And then that just goes to the next slide of the final completion. Um, these fields, when we put these slides together, the drawings have changed a little bit. So the, the field layout is a little different, but overall, this is essentially kind of what it's going to look like uh, summer of 27. Uh, I always caveat it that the grass will be down, but it'll probably still need another growing season or two, depending on when we get the seed or sod down. So it's not going to be like we, you know, walk away and there's people playing on all these fields right away. I try to set that expectation because everybody sees these slides like, oh, it's green, it's ready to go, but it'll really probably be another couple months before you're really planned and using all these fields. So that was sort of a, a broad brush run through the schedule. Does anybody have any questions on the schedule or phasing? Jamie, in terms of the pool focused on that, it seems like the only time they'll be down without a pool is that summer of 2026, right? That's when we're demolishing the existing one. Yeah. And this so it, one's probably not ready to go yet. Correct. So it'll, my, my guess, um, you know, it'll, once school's out, so there'll, there'll be no impact on the swimming team, but I know it's used for a lot of other things. So they'll, they'll have it through the summer of 2026. And then it'll probably be a process bringing everything online into the fall of, 26 uh but obviously the the end game is we'll have the pool ready to go for for the winter season for swimming so it'll be that summer fall will be the window kind of that well uh, your substantial completion date is um 
July 30th. So why wouldn't it be done July 30th? We're shooting for that. Well, well there's LDs. So if you yeah. miss it, there's LDs. Um, Cora or Kevin, does that, I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, not I think having the pool for summer of 2026 is that pro yeah, programming wise, that's best case scenario and the best time for the pool to not have a pool would be summer of 2026 because we do still have the pool at Pine Knoll. Um and we we do use the high school pool in the summer, but nowhere near as much as the rest of the year. Great. And for the Marlins, we uh are starting our season next week. We stay indoors in the high school until school gets out. And then as soon as school gets out, we move to Pine Knoll. So for swim team, we don't use it. I know the rec department uses it for swimming lessons and camps and stuff. So I think that would have the biggest impact of not having that space available. Um, I know we still have Pine Knoll, but trying to, I think we could work to finagle like how to do swimming lessons with camp and stuff like that. But that would be more like a Donna question. And then as far as swim team goes in the fall, we don't start our fall season until October. So, um, and then the high school starts in November. So I don't know if Donna is still on or wants to speak to programming in the pool in the summertime. Sure. Um yeah, that's definitely okay with me. I mean, that's only one summer and we have the outdoor pool. So um, that's a pretty good compromise for us. Great. Great. Well, that's about all we had for our presentation at the other questions for the design team or for Fontaine pop back up to the um, agenda real quick any other questions for uh, any of the parties who are here about the design or the timeline or anything else at this point no Okay, so I believe that gets us through most everything and then brings us down to new business. Is there any new business? In terms of next meeting dates, Cora, I mean, I think, you know, we've got some detailed questions from today, which is great. I think if people think of other detailed questions, certainly reach out. But just in terms of what the committee would like, would you like to meet? every other month just to check in um, how how are things feeling? I mean, we certainly yeah. will meet after we do the 60% uh, cost estimate. Uh, so that wouldn't be until again, kind of late, late July. Um, but just wanted to get a feel for the committee. Yeah, I mean, if there's nothing you need from us or need for us to decide, I think we can wait until that unless there's anything else that people feel like we need to discuss ahead of time. I know we had a separate meeting about stuff that was needed specifically for the pool. I, a group of us met separately about like lane lines and all that kind of stuff that not everybody else <laughs> needed to be included on. So um, I think we got a lot of that stuff covered. I don't know if there's anything else. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Great. Well, why don't we plan on meeting after that 60% cost estimate just to keep everyone up to date on that front. And um, if there's any need to meet ahead of then, certainly reach out um, and we'll uh, keep pushing along. Great. All right. Um, so I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank Greg, you. I figured you'd be on that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. I got you. And I'm just going to do a voice vote for this. Um, everyone who's good with adjourning, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed?
have it figured. All right. Well, great. Thank you, everybody. And thanks for the great updates. It looks great. And we will see you in a couple months. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. it. Take care, everyone.